Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In today's video I'm going to build a crazy abandoned outpost that can be used in Warhammer 40,000 or any sort of futuristic sci-fi tabletop game. To begin with I bought a, a bunch of little toys and thought I could harvest these and for bits and it's always something that I wanted to try. So without further ado I started to dismantle these and these were a little bit more difficult actually than I thought but you know after some patience and diligence we got there. And my buddy Tommy from Zitadis reached out again and wanted to do another collaboration so I picked out a bunch of bits from his website, links in the description below, and ordered a few things. If you haven't seen my previous video where I took this old monastery and turned it into this crazy floating island then be sure to check that out again i'll link that in the video description below so i ordered this little walkway type connector piece again i think very useful in any sort of terrain building something that you can use in a sort of modular fashion and build off of really easily um, ordered some barrels who doesn't love barrels? I didn't end up using these. I completely forgot I'd ordered them. Sorry, Tommy. But I did use these really cool little generator pieces um, cast from resin. Again, these, you know, if you've got a 3D printer, you can you can easily print these out yourself. I don't have one. So, um, you know, these are a nice little option um, packed with detail. But the main reason that I wanted to try something in this nature was was this piece. Uh, it's a very popular terrain piece from their website. Um, it's a kind of imperial type sci-fi bastion. Great for space marines basically. Um, and it's made of foam. Completely cast out of um, a kind of high density foam which can easily be cut and manipulated just with a sharp knife. And as you can see, the scale works great. A little space marine here looks perfect. So with my box of bits ready to go, I took a piece of MDF, some more XPS foam, and began to visualize what I wanted to do. I did have an idea to really make use of the material that this bastion was made out of. Um, if this was made in plastic, it, this process would be far more difficult. So. With just with a drill bit, I started to score out what would be bullet holes, and this quickly escalated into the firefight of all firefights, really. But um, I, got, I had so much fun doing it. And then I continued the idea by adding a few more pieces of wood, also with some foam on top. And then the process of puzzle making started just trying to put these pieces together um, slowly adding pieces of card and foam board and seeing what worked seeing what didn't work changing my ideas and as this process grew you you know one idea slowly starts to materialize more than others and just by using little components and bits and pieces, adding more bits of detail, really started to get a, an idea of what I wanted to do. And on this particular piece, I wanted to have a, a damaged crane that had somehow destroyed one of the other platforms as well. Um, and this needed some very high tech industrial pipe work. So I used these kids toys. Um, actually got recommended these from Eric's Hobby Workshop originally um, and then I started to fix all manner of bottle tops together and see what sort of fitted together see what managed to slot into each other and then I just took some wire made a coil and threaded this through another coil and began to really make my crane And as this started to take shape, I really started to add it more and more little details, just little bits of 
ladder this is actually, some matchsticks, some bottle tops, little fan pieces. And I was amazed at how much detail there was in, in some of the little children's toys that we dismantled. Um, full of great little parts, I have to say. I'm just using a hot glue gun here just to work quickly. You could easily use super glue as well. Um, but just for this process, I just started to use a hot glue gun. I just work quite quickly. Just little dots here and there. And there she goes. I did some wires, some little eye beams and starting to take shape. And my crane also came together quite well. I added some little supports. I think all of this I'll destroy later, but just with some extra little bits and bobs that I had lying around in my bits box, I, we've fashioned a reasonably viable crane. But I felt something was missing, so nothing like a good industrial tank with some piping to add a further detail. This was just uh, something I had lying around and collected after a while. And I thought this could just sit quite nicely on the back here. But unfortunately, my design didn't allow for that so I had to adapt things slightly and so I cut a piece of foam so the wood could also slot in still but it would allow an adequate support for my industrial tank so I fixed that on and I think that starts to really just finish off that side and I got carried away I built another building again just using I think this time I used some of the dump truck parts um, some foam board, just cutting these down with a hobby saw. Get nice straight edges. And then began to just have fun and imagine what a building might be used for, what its function could be. And this doesn't need to be exact by any means. I mean, this is just me letting my imagination run wild a little and having a bit of fun with it as I go. But I thought this could be some kind of staging area, some, some sort of important industrial building that aided in the industry of this little compound. And some of the joints I just started to tidy up with little pieces of, of card. This is just compressed card. Can be ordered in little blocks. See, it's the sort of thing that you might find on the back of a, a block of paper or so. But it's great to work with. It's a fantastic little modeling tool. I always have a little handy selection of strips cut to size. And they're great for just patching in and it's you know it's pretty neat, paints up really well. And I just continue to add parts and small details and little extra support structures. And this part's really fun, you know, you can just really let your imagination run wild. And it's amazing where you where you begin to take influences from and you know other buildings that you may have seen in the past. But again, really just know that there's no really right or wrong way to do this. There's no, no one can tell you, oh no, this doesn't work in, in real life. It's you know, it's your creation, it's your imagination. And I thought it'd be really cool to have a little door here. So again, out of the cardboard, I cut some shapes and made a door and continued to add little bits of piping and other bits of toy that I dismantled and harvest. And some of the pieces I had to cut down, you know, 
take a piece and cut another piece out of that. And then I added some wires by using literal wire and just some little rubber grommets. And then making again some little sort of gangway supports with more card. And then I primed all this up just with some spray paint. And it's amazing how once you get everything the same color, it really begins to take shape and, and, and unify the whole thing. And this doesn't mean that the process is finished. You can always prime it and then add a little more, you know, add a few more bits, just as I have here. I did a little light, that, you know, a little doorway. You can just touch that in. And then I wanted to cut a little point of destruction where the crane would crash into. And again, all these little parts are pretty modular. You can rearrange these in any way and you know, it would still, still kind of work. But I wanted to you know, come up with a little scenario and I added another little bridge here just by adding some card and some little popsicle sticks and a little ladder and I fixed this down actually with with a couple of magnets mm. and it just meant that I could easily take it apart when moving it and just boop, pop it back in when when in use and then I wanted to use this ruined bastion and my imagination kind of ran wild a little and I thought oh what happens if uh, another civilization had somehow fight, found it and repurposed some of the bits and built a kind of radar station, maybe a kind of pirate radio signal or something funny, you know? So uh, out of more bottle tops and bits and bobs and funny little circular things that I'd collected over time, I sort of created this strange little puzzle of things that interlocked and took some hair curlers. So I kind of liked the pattern on the inside and thought that they'd make a really cool radar tower. So I cut some of these apart, glued these together. And, you know, this was a bit of trial and error, but after sort of nibbling away and getting the shape that I kind of wanted, trialing, testing, and gluing it again, I kind of found the shape that I was looking for and managed to kind of build this jerry-rigged radar station, sending out some sort of rebel signal underneath the eyes of the emperor. <laughs> but yeah, it worked out really well. It just adds another sort of little visual feature. And at some point you have to stop because I could keep building onto this forever really, but that's for another video. So then I took some black ink and just started to darken up some of the shadows. You may have heard this referred to as pre-shading before. And it's basically just picking out some darker areas, getting some shadow in there, some depth so that when I apply the subsequent coats of paint that you already have some sense of, of dark colour in there. Am I using an airbrush here? are able to get lovely graduated tones. Again, you don't need to use an airbrush at, at all by any means. You could, you could do this by just washing in, using some diluted paint but it's just much faster and much easier and I've got, got an airbrush so why not use it? And then just with some thinned down acrylic paint, I painted in some red. And this may seem a little bright at first but you know, we'll, we'll really get that weathered down to something more more fitting. Again, because it's kind of 
battered and worn. It's really not important to, to get an even coverage of paint at this point. But, you know, at one point it did have an even coverage, so, you know, some variation is good, but, you know, I wanted to try and get some paint into all areas, really. And with everything sort of base coated in, I, you know, picked out little bits in silver and gunmetal. Um, sometimes varying the amount of silver and black I mixed. So I have a darker shade or a lighter shade. We'll just slowly start picking out some of the details. And you can see I'm using a much smaller brush here. Just whatever the tool needs at hand. And then with some, some dark grey, I just started to pick out some of the details in the, in the building, what may have been metalwork or you know, armour plated reinforcing around the edges. You know, this calls for a little bit more neatness, a little more, bit more brush control, but just take your time. Not in a rush here. If I do make a mistake, I can easily correct it. Just by picking out some red or so. And just by adding this little layer of detail, it yeah, it just adds a bit more visual interest, separates the colours out a little. And I had a, an old aircraft model, like a little sort of airfix type model fighter jet that I'd used in a previous previous video and, and had some transfers left over from this, some sort of generic lettering and, and sort of warning transfers. And I thought these would be kind of cool and just add that little bit more detail. So I applied some of these to my crane specifically. And these have a little bit of a glossy reflection to begin with once they're dry. But you can just wash over with some paint and it quickly sets them back. And then I took some, some wash. In this case I kind of bucked the trend a little bit I guess. And um, I'm using an oil wash. Um, I always feel that an oil wash just gets into those places that are harder to reach that bit easier um, by nature oil paint or solvent based paint has a lower surface tension so it just gets into all those cracks that little bit more easily than uh, a water-based wash might but if you, you know if you're if you're not familiar with oil paints then by all means you can just mix up some black or brown and, and just smash this all over the, the model but what I really like is with the addition of some solvent, it dries in a really nice matte, even way. Then I took some brown transparent ink and just started to spray this into some of the deeper areas, deepen off some of the shadows, get some sort of grime on the metalwork, the beginnings of what might be some rust. Again, just being pretty free with this. It's you know, a bit of overspray here and there, it's not going to do any harm. In, in fact, it probably helps a little bit, just get everything knitted more closely together. And the inks are lovely to spray through an airbrush. They really tend to be quite transparent, but you know, you can build these up very easily and can work very quickly. And because they're quite transparent in nature, they really give you this wonderful, wonderful blend. And then just with a sponge and some sort of orangey brown, ochre type colors, I started to just dot in little bits of, of rust into some of the pipework and exposed metal areas. I kind of tried to keep this really random, 
not replicating patterns too much or you know too much build up in one specific area so it kind of takes away but you can slowly see as the colors build up particularly on this tank with the browns and the sort of greens and grays it, it really starts to take on a kind of really aged look I'm just taking my time dabbing little bits you can always add more you know if you feel like you put too much you can always come in with a bit of red or brown and then I've got some streaking grind from AK Interactives and this is a, an enamel based uh, kind of liquid and it's it's really dark and grimy and and you can thin it down with some, some white spirit or some, some solvent. And it's fantastic, I love this stuff. It just get this into any sort of recessed metal area and it really dries quite matte, but it kind of gives you that sort of clogged in, grimy vibe. And you can pull this down and thin it out and get really nice transitions and drips and you know, again, it's important to kind of just build this up in slowly, but you know, well, once you get a sense of how much is needed for any particular type of job, you can just you can be quite free with it. And you know, it's not a neat thing. You don't need to sit there with a fine brush and you can, it's quite fun. And, and it's amazing the effect that comes out. Um, and it is a fantastic little addition that I like to use it's um, a sort of turquoisey coloured wash from Games Workshop and I apply this onto sort of metal work and just let this build up into some of the recesses and it gives you that sort of really oxidised copper pipe kind of decayed look and against the orange it works great because it just gives you just another little visual colour, something else to break things up. Um, you know, as chemicals react with each other in, in real life, I guess. You get this kind of overspill and natural decay and it just really helps sell the effect. And then this is probably my favourite. Um, I can't remember where I got this. I think it was from a modelling shop somewhere. Um, and it's sold as, as just rust in a, in a jar. Um, I'm not really sure what it's, I think it's used for movie props or something, um, or prop making. But you apply this on and within a few seconds, it dries into this kind of really crusty, oxidized, ultra matte color and it, depending on the amount that you put on it kind of vary, varies in color a little but i have to say this is my number one go-to for if you want a quick rust boom rust in a pot basically and then just to finish things off i a cheap alternative to some pigment powders is just using some some artists chalk um, I got these cheap from the local department store um, and crushed up some brown and some, some orange. And then just with a brush, just dab this on. Don't need to fix it really. The pigment is so high that it kind of stains the, the surface a little. You can always blow away any excess or remove a little. You can add a little bit of spirit to really fix it on. Um, and it kind of makes this kind of gunky mess, which flows nicely into cracks and recesses but the, for the most part that kind of finishes it off it gives it a really nice dusty vibe and and yeah I'm really pleased with how things have turned out um, if you've liked what you've seen so far you can support the channel by subscribing to stay up to date for future videos you can give it a like you know it always helps and maybe share it with some friends or people who you think might also find it interesting. Now, I've had a great time and I have to say a super huge thank you to Tommy from Zizities 
for sending me um, some more stuff to work with. Go check them out, they sell some great products. And I've had a ton of fun doing this. I can't wait to test this out on the battlefield and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.